Hello everyone, hello again from USA Canada Visa Help and today I'll discuss on how to submit the application form for your Canada study permit. So the first thing and most important thing you need to have an application form right to apply. So for here you need to have an application form which is called IMM1294 and to submit this form what you need is a software or or an acrobat reader dc okay in your computer not acrobat reader acrobat reader dc if you have acrobat reader dc you will be able to open the form and will be able to work on it but if you do not have acrobat reader dc you must first download every computer has acrobat dc almost every computer but not all computers have acrobat reader dc which is like a little bit better in opening this kinds of forms like canadian visa application related forms so you need that form to uh, you need that um uh, like software or the facility to open the form otherwise it will not be able to uh, you will not be able to do anything uh, with this kind of applications like IMM1294 and also you will have to submit IMM5645 and also if you decide to submit IMM5257 which I strongly encourage you to do so you need Adobe Acrobat Reader DC to open all those forms and work on those forms otherwise you will not be able to do so so please first download and install adobe acrobat reader dc i will show you where you can find it so you do not have to worry too much about it it is not a rocket science at best this is a board science so bear with me now let's see how you can have adobe acrobat reader dc to your computer so this is quite simple just write adobe acrobat reader dc and then there will be quite a bit of suggestions like download adobe acrobat reader this is not dc okay you need to see where you have dc not only adobe acrobat reader so here it may be an option adobe acrobat reader dc you may go there and try alternatively you can go this is not that okay it is only adobe acrobat reader so not that not this as well but it might be adobe acrobat reader dc so you can go there like in you may have the links go by going there and also this might be another option so there are various options you need to go and check like i cannot tell you how i downloaded because i downloaded it far ago so i cannot <laughs> tell you from where i have downloaded it but you will have a lot of like this is another way here you can go like you have to go and check where you can find it there should be multiple places if you do not find it here like do more results then more results will come adobe acrobat reader dc related okay so like here this is another option so there will be too many too many options so you have to go and check where you can download and install adobe acrobat reader dc so don't be scared it's not a rocket science okay so bear with me how to now fill out the form okay let's see now because i have adobe acrobat reader dc in my computer i do not have to worry too much about opening imm on 294e okay so this is the application form so be very very much accurate or be very much serious when you fill out this form because this is the cornerstone or of your application this is a very vital thing this is the top most important thing if you make a mistake that is bad so but you will not make a mistake eventually but be a little bit vigilant or be a little bit mm, very much uh, in concentration like mm, avoid all kinds of noises and uh, stuff and then go into the form and uh, be very very much concentrated on this okay so this is UCI, you do not have any number like that. So I want service in English and then your full name. Okay, but full name, this is the place where you give your family name. Family name means last name. Okay, given name means first name. 
and then have you ever used any other names if no then select no maybe no in almost everybody's case have you ever used any other name so no and then sex means if you are male female or whatever just select them and date of birth the format is here year month day place of birth your place of birth means city okay and country here you have to select from the drop down your country and current country or territory of residence means now where are you living previous countries or territories of residence so previously where did you live during the past five years okay other than your country of citizenship or current country so for example currently you are living in us so you will be in, uh, you'll be in putting your us data here and previous countries or territories of residence apart from your home country like if you're for example an indian citizen so what do you do you do not have to tell that india okay because it's in india you have lived it's okay but canadian embassy or canadian visa officer is in, interested to know that wh what country other than your country of current country of residence what you have already mentioned here so you do not need to mention here and not also your country of citizenship so you do not also have to mention that okay all right so here you put for example you have gone to a visit to, to australia or japan or south korea or whatever country you can input that data not your current country of residence what you have input here or your country of citizenship what is not required for you oh here citizenship you have to select the country of citizenship okay like if you're chinese by citizenship do china if you're indian like india bangladesh bangladesh pakistan whatever country ghana nepal whatever country so just select that okay and then what happens here is country or territory where applying same as current country or territory of res residence so current country or territory of residence here almost every time you're like doing yes okay so select yes then you do not have to input for example where applying means uh, like where you are right now okay so just select yes because you will be always be there <laughs> there is no doubt okay so your current ma marital status just mention that and if you are married if if you are married or in common law relationship okay so uh, your current marital status and now if you are married or in provide the date of which like when you married when you got married that day and then this is not your place this is the place for canadian visa officer so you do not do anything so here you do not have to write anything because it will it will not like let you write anything so you go to you go to the you go to the number 11 okay have you like whatever has a number you have to fill out okay so this is not your place you do not have to do anything here have you previously been married like this this one is like if number 10 was your current marital status and what date of your current marriage happened okay provide the name of the spouse like your wife or husband husband's last name or wife's last name or husband's or wife's first name or given name given name means first name family name means last name okay and then in the next page if you were married give that information here before this marriage do you understand have you previously been married or in common law like if you had married like multiple times more than one time then this information comes into play 
otherwise almost every time almost in every person's case it will be no and then date of birth type of relationship like uh, the date of birth of your spouse okay so this is not okay oh uh, sorry let me check okay this is this is like t talking about the spouse okay spouse name like spouse last name given name the previous spouse not this spouse okay you understand that because it is have you previously been married or in common law relationship and then spouse's date of birth like previous spouse not this one and then type of relationship and from when to when like in the case of divorce okay so this information comes into play for the people who have a divorce case and then language native language mother tongue are you able to communicate in english or french and now passport number you, you know this is pretty simple passport number is in your passport country or territory of issue like where it was issued issued it expiry date and national identity document so all the other stuff i hope you will be able to understand anything that comes below okay but still i will i will be giving you a little view like have you taken a test for designate uh, designated testing agency to assess your proficiency on of english or french in english or french like did you have any IELTS or TOEFL or any French language test? So then select yes. In almost all the cases, it will be yes for you. So go with that because otherwise the medium of, medium of instruction has to be used. So and that is quite rare. So it might be yes for you. Okay, so national ID document, USPR card. And in case of USPR card, like US permanent residence, are like they will be automatically given the visa so their their case is a bit different so i do not think your case is that so you do not have to go through this thing like select no so then contact information current mailing address and if your residential address is the same then select yes same as current mailing address then mailing address means where you can be sent any document or your um, address where a letter can be given or sent okay and then telephone number fa fax email so these are quite simple things details of intended study in canada so name of the school like from which school you have received the offer letter that school my level of study like masters bachelors or like whatever okay so doctoral whatever degree you are going to achieve so just write that so this way you fill out your uh, student id number whatever information you have designated learning institute number whatever you know just but do not skip the mandatory fields like mandatory fields are like marked star okay so you cannot skip them but whatever is not mandatory you can skip them okay like other other is not mandatory but my expenses in Canada will be paid by. This is mandatory because this has a star. So be very, very much careful about what you are skipping. And education, like from when to when you have studied, like your previous master's, bachelor's or whatever. Okay. So have you ever um, had any post-secondary education, including university? If answered, yes. Highest level. So highest level of post-secondary education means like the most recent or highest degree you have achieved like if you have masters already so do masters you do not need to mention bachelors masters if you already have a phd do phd only no masters no bachelors okay so that way and here employment data uh, em employment information so just fill out everything these are quite simple so background information is like almost in every case you have to select no because any yes from background information is bad okay 
so this is like a screening test okay so just be mindful and then in the last section do the signature okay and then date and that's it so this is not a big deal this is not a rocket science and when you fill out you, you, you can write your name okay here you can write your name signature or, or pay, uh, applicant or parent legal guardian for a person under 18 years and the date you can choose a date from here from the drop down so everything is quite straightforward you but you have to be mindful here you need to be more concentrated because they, this is the application form okay and then when you fill out everything then you do validate click on here and then your form will be validated and then upload this form to the section so that's all so i hope you have enjoyed the video keep watching so that you can understand the step-by-step -step process of his application for your canada study permit so i hope you will watch my next videos for more information thank you so much have a good day bye bye